Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman or at Schneems on the Internet. This is week two of database management. We will be talking about uh, table relationships and joining. So if you missed last week or you're not familiar with how to do a, a simple select on a database table, then um, go and you can search YouTube or my feed and find the, find the previous videos. Or maybe, uh, maybe check out uh, Head First on SQL is a, is a great book. So let's talk about relationships. I want you to meet John. John owns a car. As a matter of fact, John owns a few cars. And, um, you know, he might own many, many, many cars. You could say that John has a relationship to his cars. Um, we want to uh, represent this some way, and uh, we would say that uh, John has many cars, and a car belongs to John. That that would be a uh, that would be a fair statement. So, how do we store that relationship? How can we actually represent that some way in our uh, in our database in our data store? Well, uh, let's just say that we have uh, instead of John, it's a user with a primary key of one, and that we have two different cars: a car number one and a car number two. the uh, The first instinct would just be to say, "All right, well, since John owns these cars, we can store that relationship with John, um, with our user number one." So, in that same table, we could say user number one, and then we could also have maybe a, a cars um, field, and we could keep a, a comma separated list of cars. You know. So um, here, user user number one knows that they own car number one and car number two, and car number one and car number two don't you know don't know who who owns them in this situation. So you know that kind of works well for this scenario, but uh, when you get onto this scenario where one person owns tons of cars, um, that user table would get huge. Uh, you you just have one entry, and here you know we have. Uh, one user owns over a hundred cars, and and that's you know kind of uh, kind of difficult to manage. So that might uh, you know that might look a little bit you know sound a little bit unreasonable. What kind of person owns a hundred cars? Um, but you know let's not say it's a, a residential person. Maybe this is the uh, manager of a regional car dealership, and you know these are all the all the cars that are in the inventory, and that you know this is how we want to keep track of it. So don't get in too hung up on the on the physical details of the example but you know this is uh, an actual reasonable real life uh, thing that we might want to model some someone has owns cars and someone can own lots and lots of cars um, so we we don't want to do this we don't want to store that relationship um, with John or you know with the user so um, how else could we do it um, is there a better way to store that relationship so you know we could store it with the cars themselves. So we have, again, we have, we have John, our user number one, and we've got car number one and car number two. Uh, here, each car actually knows the user they belong to. So uh, car number one points at user number one. They, we just keep a simple reference to them. And car number two also points back at user number one and says, hey, this is, this is the person that owns me. Uh, this might seem a little counterintuitive, for this example, um, because in, in real life, things don't know that you own them. The, the computer I'm presenting this on doesn't know that I own it. Um, but in terms of modeling relationships, it does make a lot of sense, especially when you move out to the, the truly many situ uh, situation uh, where you have 100 different cars. It makes a lot more sense for each of those cars to just point back at the user and it, it makes things quite a bit simpler in terms of storing the data and then querying it. Um, <clears throat> so if we were to actually look at a table of how we would construct this, this would be our user's table. Here we have a primary key of ID. Um, so I, our person number one, user number one, the name is going to be John, and we can store additional information that we want. Maybe, you know, favorite number, whatever. doesn't necessarily matter for this example. Uh, we then have a cars table, and this is where we store all of the information about our cars. So um, we have our primary keys. They're all, you know, pretty much I'm always going to represent them as being on the left. Uh, for And for example, the um, car with a primary key of one, it's going to be a, con a compact car. It's going to be in fairly good condition. And we have a user ID table that actually... 
um, tells us what user owns it. So this user ID in this table, if we go back, actually matches the ID of John. So we are saying that John owns all of these cars. Pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. So if we have a car, you know, how do we find John? Or if you were just doing SQL, how do we find John? Uh, so we would want to select star from users where name is John. And this will return back to us a table entry. And in that table entry, we will have a primary key. We can take that primary key and then turn around and do another query. Um, we can find all of John's cars with that primary key. We would say select star from cars where user ID is equal to 1. And since the user ID represents an ID in the user's table and that ID in the user's table represents John, this is a query for all of the cars that John owns. So if we want to find um, data about a car and John at the same time, um, we kind of just want to join all that data together. Uh, how can we do it? Another way of asking this would, would be, you know, hey, how can we find information about John's cars without knowing his ID? Previously, we had to do two separate queries. We had to do one to get John's ID, and then we had to do another query to actually go and get, um, get some information about his car. So... We have these two separate queries, and we want to join them together. Uh, we want to perform both at the same time. Uh, and since we have this implicit relationship in our database, in our relational database, we have this, um, you know, these these keys that are pointing at one another. Uh, the user ID is pointing at the ID of the user table. I know it's a bit of a tongue twister, but um, kind of you know kind of makes sense. Uh, so in order to join these two things together, we actually will use a join. Uh, if you take a look at the previous SQL statements, the beginning of this, it kind of looks very similar. We're going to select users.star from the users table. So we actually want to return back a user in this scenario. And then here we are actually going to tell our database how, those, how the cars table relates to the users table. Uh, so here we are going to join cars on cars.userid. So the uh, user ID is going to be the, the foreign key that is going to point at uh, users.id. So in this scenario, that's going to be 1 uh, for John's user ID. And then we are going to uh, have a where clause that we're going to be looking at users.name is equal to John. So the full thing, essentially we are telling our database, hey, look up users that have a name of John, and then whatever ID um, a user has that has a name of John, find that, and then find all of the cars that have a, a user underscore ID that matches that. Um, the reason you want to do this, uh, relational databases are very fast. Uh, typically, this type of an ID, this uh, user underscore ID, would have an index on it. And performing this calculation, this calculation in the database is going to be much, much quicker than it would be returning all of the users named John and then getting all of their IDs and then doing a separate query. We still can do that, but uh, a lot of times it's easier or it's better to just ask our database directly what we want rather than to have to make multiple queries and uh, and do this kind of, you know, step by step. And this is, a, this is kind of a, a contrived, um, very simple example. And we can see later how this is actually going to be use, useful, how, we can, uh, how can, we can really save a lot of time by leveraging the power of our database versus doing this all in separate queries. Uh, so, yeah, I know, pretty exciting, right? Uh, what, what just happened there is we are using the user ID column on the cars table, which is a foreign key. In the ID column on the users table, which is a primary key. So the user ID on cars points at the ID on users. A uh, little bit of a little bit of a tongue twister. If you're you know kind of lost you there, maybe scroll back to when I was uh, when I was we were looking at the at the tables and actually if I go back myself, um, here we have 
a the cars table which has its own primary key of ID and then it has a foreign key of user ID and we can use that foreign key to find a, a primary key in another table so here it's the users table so again a, a number one on the user ID table or on the user ID column would tell us that we are finding we want a user with a primary key of one which makes sense it's just another way of saying it. That's the, the correct terminology is uh, user underscore ID is a foreign key and ID is the primary key. So at the end of the day, a car's user underscore ID ties it to a user via their ID. Um, and when you want related data, those two things have a relationship, then you want to join that data together. Uh, that is one method of of doing this type of a query. We could also do a subselect, which in most databases is not very performant. Um, if you are, if you have a, a indexed um, foreign key on the uh, user underscore ID, a lot of times doing this type of a join will be performant in most databases. So, all right, that, that was kind of like the lead up into what's going on, um, this concept of uh, foreign key, primary key, a uh, little bit of relationships, and you know maybe how we might want to store some stuff in a database. Well, let's, let's actually do some, a, a real life query. Let's say, you know, we have, have this scenario where uh, you know, we, we own a car dealership or, or mul different users own um, car dealerships. Maybe we want to find all of our cars in a bad condition, a quote, bad condition. So if we were just looking for cars, it would be relatively simple. We would just say select star from cars where condition is bad. But uh, if we wanted to say, all right, find all of the users who have bad cars, all of the users who own bad cars, it would be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more tricky. We'd need to do that in two SQL statements without, a, if we didn't use a join, you know, we'd have to first pull back all of the cars and then get all of those IDs together and then uh, do another, um, get all those user underscore IDs together, and then do another query. Well, again, it, it, since all that data is in the database, and, and the, the database knows about that uh, relationship, or we can tell it about that relationship easily enough, it makes sense to just do that with um, by leveraging the database. So we can actually pull back all of the users that have a car in a bad condition, with one SQL query. Here we're selecting uh, users.star, so we're bringing back all of the users from the user table. And again, we're gonna just uh, tell our database how to how that relationship is formed. So it's gonna join cars on cars.user underscore ID and uh, users on the users.id field. So the cars foreign key joined to the users primary key. And uh, then we're going to have a where clause and tell it that we only want cars where the condition is bad. So this will only bring back users that have cars that have a bad condition. Uh, you know, this is very powerful. It's uh, a, a query like this is going to be relatively um, you know, pretty performant. And uh, you can kind of see maybe where we can make this a lot more complex. We could add, you can add a lot more um, conditions than, than just one way or clause and uh, really build some powerful uh, querying capability into your app. Um, another thing we might want to do is count all of a user's cars. Say, you know, given a user, given a user name, um, how, can, how many cars do they own? Well, uh, we haven't introduced you to the two functions inside of SQL. This is an example of using a count function inside of SQL. Um, it is going to be built in. Now, all databases are going to have different functions. Count is one of them that is uh, fairly generic across almost all databases. Uh, but they're depending on which one you're using, Postgres or uh, SQLite, MySQL, one of those, uh, they will have different functions that maybe are optimized differently and um, some of them can can even have unique functions that aren't implemented in some of the other uh, databases. So here again uh, we are just only returning the count. We're gonna we're not gonna bring back the cars, we're just going to return the count 
of the cars um, from the cars table. And again, we're using that join statement and we are limiting by users.name is equal to John. So this is going to find any user named John um, and uh, return back the count of their cars. Uh, so I mentioned we have functions. We can use count as a function. Um, average, if you if you supply numbers, a bunch of different numbers, um, I guess it would be a vector of numbers, or uh, max, also min. Those are very, very common functions. In addition to functions, whenever we're doing, so far we've only looked at uh, queries where things are equal to. Um, we can also say not equal to, we can say greater than, we can say less than, and if something is null, then we can ask, we can look for is null or is not null uh, to, to single out those fields. Uh, so that is just, I guess, kind of a quick introduction into functions inside of SQL. So, okay, now that, now that we've got that relationship un, underhand, uh, John went and got married. So now uh, cars have two owners. So there's a user number one and a user number two. Um, how, you know, how exactly would we represent that? A, so we would say a user has many cars, which is the same as before, but now cars have many users. Previously, a car belonged to a singular user. Uh, so we would say that this can be described as a has and belongs to many. You might see this represented or abbreviated as H-A-B-T-M. So users have and belong to many cars as well as cars have and belong to many users. So this is a completely reversible relationship. <clears throat> if you're going to actually draw it out, it would look, in this scenario, it would look something, you know, kind of like this. So uh, user one has car number one and car number two. User two has car number one and car number two. Car number one has user one and number two and so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, this could be rather complex if you actually tried to model it the same way we just did using just a simple foreign key. Uh, so we, we could uh, try to store that relationship in the cars like we did last time. We could have a user underscore ID underscore one and a user underscore ID underscore two. Um, but given the last time I was bringing up possibilities, I didn't bring up the correct possibility the first time. Um, that's the, the, the same way here. Um, you know, what if John and John's spouse have kids? Um, or, you know, again, if we're not going along with the, uh, you know, J John example, maybe instead of uh, John and a spouse and kids, it's a company. And they're company cars. So there's two, you know, maybe there's two people who own a company and there are two company cars and they hire a hundred, you know, a hundred new employees. They get super successful and then buy a thousand new cars. Um, you know, these types of scenarios are quite plausible and, you know, relatively, you know, we want to be able to model those. So if a user truly has many cars and cars truly have many users, we want to be able to account for this type of a scenario. So, <clears throat> You can see here, if, even if we just have two cars and six users, uh, all those cars keeping track of all of their users would be, you know, incredibly cumbersome, especially as we increased the number of total users. Um, you know, this is tantamount to what we were doing previously by storing cars in the users table. So you don't want to do that. Seems, seems pretty reasonable. But, you know, w what do we want to do? Um, we want to abstract that information, that relationship, out to a completely separate table. So here we just have kind of a, a, a black box or pink box in this scenario where each car knows that it, um, it has a relationship with this table and each user knows it has a relationship with that table and we no longer actually have to store any um, relationship information, individual relationship information with any of our individual elements. Um, so it would look something kind of like this. A, uh, the car's user table would have a primary key and then it would have a column for all of the car IDs as well as a column for all of the user IDs. And this is with only two people in two cars, this is how we could represent that. Um, we would call this a car's user joins table. So, um, and then in the individual, in the user, 
we could store, um, we could keep track of, uh, you know, where they are inside of that table. Uh, so let's ask, and let's just say, okay, find all of the users who own car number one. How would we do that? Well, the, the SQL would be not exactly 100% uh, straightforward, so let's just do it you know, manually. Well, first of all, we would, what are we looking for? Users who own car number one. So um, we would look for all of the car IDs that, are, that match one, and then we would be able to find out, pull the user IDs. So here we would, um, it would be car ID one, and that maps to user ID number one, as well as user ID number two. So users number one and number two own car number one. Um, let's, you know, flip it around. Let's find users based on, uh, or, yeah, let's find cars based on user. So, in this scenario, we are going to pull all of the rows where uh, user ID matches to, and then we are going to find the car ID that is associated with it. So, user ID of 2 is associated with car ID 1, as well as car ID 2. So, um, you know, that's kind of a example of how you would model that relationship inside of uh, a table using has and belongs to many. There, there are um, some other ways of modeling that we are going to get into later, but, um, you know, that's just really simple and uh, introduction into the terminology of has many and belongs to, which you're going to be using a fair bit. Um, the has many and belongs to many is... Uh, or has and belongs to many, is not used as much. We'll be talking about something later called uh, has many through table, but um, this was meant to just be a relatively simple introduction into uh, into that relationship. So uh, stay tuned in the, the next cast. We are going to be actually talking about how we would model those relationships inside of Ruby as well as um, using using Rails. So um, we're actually going to be you know writing some code and, and taking a look at the outcome of that. Um, but I wanted to break it down, make it a little bit easier to digest. If you uh, if you had questions about this, feel free to ping me on Twitter at Schneems or um, you know go back and and watch the uh, the screencast again or you know maybe even just continue on and, and watch the next one and uh, you might kind of just pick it up as you go along so thank you very much for tuning in again my name is richard schneeman have a great day